Hello, everybody out there. It is Friday, April 17th, 2020. Mr. Parrot here to say that it is a great day to be a junior potter. Supposedly, going to be a lot of snow out there today, so make sure that you're staying warm as you can. Maybe there will be some biotic and abiotic things happening in our environment today. Huh? 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 Get that one there? Right. A couple of general announcements, same as they have been. Remember to be doing your attendance form by 11 a.m. each day or as soon as possible after you get the email saying that you haven't checked in by 11 a.m. Make sure you're keeping up with your assignments because that can get overwhelming pretty quickly if you're not doing them on that daily basis there. If you need to take that weekend to refresh over a couple of them or use those Wednesdays where you don't have any new assignments to make sure that you're getting things done. Take advantage of every opportunity that you can. If you're turning stuff in and you don't like your score, you can always resubmit stuff to get a higher score. Just make sure that your teachers know, like me, that you are doing that so we can go back in and check it. And as always, ask if something doesn't seem right. We had some issues going on with the attendance form today. A couple of you reached out for that and we fixed the problem there. Um, it was as simple as, you know, things weren't clicked when they should have been clicked. So make sure that you're asking help, asking questions if something doesn't seem right out there. Anyways, that, those are the general announcements. Now on to what we were doing today. Yesterday, you're looking at our biotic and abiotic factors, things that are living versus non-living in our environment, as well as other things here. Oh, we have a special guest. Let's see our special guest here. <coughs> hey, there it is. It's Leo, baby. Hello. I'm Leo the dog. I'm a beagle. He would be the example of a biotic creature. Heavy at that. Oh, he hasn't been out going for his walk since it's been cold out. Oh. But he would be an example of a biotic thing, something that's living. They has those six characteristics. Things like cells made out of chemicals, needing to use energy, responding to your surroundings, that stimulus action going on there, being having the capabilities of uh, reproducing and then growing and developing over time. Those are all those six characteristics there, and that's what you're going to take a look at with our stations activity today. Now, if we were in class, how this activity would work is there would be a lot more of them than what I'm giving you. And I'd have at each table a couple of different bags. And what you would be doing would be reaching your hand into the bag or box and then feeling for what's inside. And based off of what you're feeling, you're going to tell me whether that thing was biotic or abiotic. Now, in our capabilities as it is, we've had to alter that a little bit. So what you're going to be doing is looking for things in your house that would be biotic or abiotic, taking a picture of them, and then describing how that item is either biotic or abiotic. You're going to do two things in your house that are biotic, and you're going to do two things in your house that are abiotic. And there's a couple of questions that you'll be doing for each one of them. Uh, and this is our document that I got up here. Let me full screen it so that you can see it more clearly. Boom, there we go. Uh, so we got the, the blue things is where you're going to be putting them. You got your first thing. You can put the picture right there. Boom, smack dab it on there. And then you got one, two, three, four, five questions. They do not have to be in complete sentences, just a complete thought of what your item is. The first question there is always going to be, what is the thing that you took a picture of? Because there might be like three or four things in your picture because it's probably not going to be one solid object, especially if it's in your house. There's probably other things in the picture. So tell me what object you're focusing on in the picture. You're going to describe for me some of what it looks like. For the biotic side, you're going to look to see if it has all six of the characteristics of life. Some things you might just have to assume that it would. You're going to answer the question of what makes it biotic and then how would it affect the environment because we're looking at ecology here, the study of the living things interacting with the non-living parts and how that affects the environment. How would that thing affect the environment then? You're going to do two of those. So there's a biotic one and a biotic two. You'll then go to the abiotic, which is going to be very similar as far as the questions are going to be concerned with. You're going to take a picture. You're going to tell me what the item is. You're going to give me some observations. For this one, though, instead of looking at 
does it have all of them? You're going to be looking at if they have any of them, and if so, which ones. So if it's, for example, something you consider abiotic, but it is made out of chemicals, it would be made out of chemicals still. Or if it's something that grows, you could put that it grows. Or if it's something that, I don't know if it actually, if it reproduces, that would be a weird thing for an abiotic thing to do. But if it does that, you could put that on there. Because some abiotic things actually do have some of the characteristics, but they won't have all of them. So this is to get you to start looking at what things do some of these non-living things have as opposed to all of the things that the living things would. Um, and then you're going to answer what makes that thing abiotic and then how does this part affect the environment. Um, so you got two pictures of that and two pictures of the abiotic. Five questions that go along with each one of the sets of pictures there. You're going to turn this in by Monday at 9 a.m. Most of you will probably get it done on Friday and just not have to deal with anything. I would advise doing that. That way you don't have to worry about anything over the weekend. You can kind of enjoy yourself for a couple of days before we're right back at it on Monday. But it's going to be turned in at 9 a.m. on Monday. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to ask whatsoever. We are here for you. Usually it's a very quick turnaround for when I get those emails and I'm kicking them right back out to you, especially if it's between those, you know, eight to three times. If it's after that, you know, it might get a little bit longer there. Um, but if you have a question, do not hesitate to ask. As of right now, it seems like there's about 120 of you that have completed the Pear Deck questions, which is amazing. There's only like a handful of you that are still left out there. So great job. Hopefully you're getting the flow with this. Luckily, I feel like the ecology part is one of the easier sections for us to manage. So hopefully this is stuff that maybe you've heard of before. As we get into a little bit deeper, maybe just not in the ways that we're putting them because we're getting a little bit more scientific than maybe the surface level that you may have looked at it before. Um, but what we're going to be doing next week as a little preview of what we're going to be starting up on Monday is that we're going to be looking at food chains and food webs starting up next week. So we'll be looking at who eats who, different things of producers and consumers, different levels of the energy pyramid, making a little triangle thing going on there. We're going to be looking at doing a whole bunch of stuff dealing with that starting next week as that is one of our essential standards is how does the food chain work in the environment to support all the living creatures that are inside of that environment. So hopefully you're staying safe, staying warm as it's supposed to snow. I heard somewhere between like four to eight inches. That's crazy. It's April. That should not be happening. Weird stuff happening all around over there. Um, but make sure that you're doing the best stuff that you can out there. And always remember that it is a great day to be a junior potter. <laughs>